Sauropods are rare throughout the Gobi Desert. For whatever reason, their suspension bridge frames weren't treated too well by the ever-shifting natural processes of the region. Each new long neck specimen, no matter how fragmented, helps to get a better understanding of the ecology and evolution of Mongolian dinosaurs throughout the Cretaceous period. Let's take a closer look at one such addition made in 2020. Hey, while I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. The Alagdig Formation is a geologic formation that does not often find itself an object of discussion. It has yet to see many eyes, and much is still unknown about it and the animals that lived at that time and place. More specifically, the Alagdig Formation is a lens of rock found in Mongolia that dates to the end of the Cretaceous period, technically the middle and beginning of the end of the late Cretaceous epoch, if we're being precise, of course. Or, well, 85 to 72 million years ago, if we want to be real precise about it. It's about 16 meters or 52 feet thick at some localities where it outcrops to reveal mostly dinosaur fossils at this time. This geologic formation was first studied by some Soviet and Mongolian nerds during the aptly named Joint Soviet-Mongolian Geological Expedition from 1967 to 1990. These goobers first started collecting specimens from this formation at a site called Abdrant Nuru, which is technically within the Ulan Nur depression of the Gobi Desert. Paleontologist A.V. Sochava was the first of the expedition to start prospecting in this area in 1970, resulting in the collection of some turtle shell bits, some dino eggs, and dino bones. Their colleague, V.P. Derdolkovov, ended up doing the same, but they found a series of tail vertebrae from a large dinosaur. This specimen would be field prepared and taken back to the Borisyak Paleontological Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow. The sorry saps that collected it probably assumed it would be cleaned, prepared, and studied by someone eventually, but that eventually would take quite some time. It remained untouched and unloved for 30 years. In 2000, paleontologist Andre Podolsno came upon the specimen still in its field jacket and got to work cleaning it. This act was enough to tell that the specimen surely belonged to a new genus of sauropod dinosaur, but it would sit around again for the next 20 years. 2020 finally saw the official publication of the specimen by Alexander O. Averinov and Alexei V. Lopatin. The specimen is truly one of the specimens ever. Specimen PIN 5669-1 is simply a chunk of vertebrae, eight from the beginning of the tail and one from the middle of the tail, plus some tail ribs, which are of course called chevrons. That's literally all there is to it. And yet, Avarinov and Lopatin were still able to find what they thought were enough anatomical traits preserved in those bones to tell this animal was unique from every single sauropod dinosaur ever found. So, this pair of scientists named the critter Abdarenurus barsbolai. The genus name is uncreatively derived from the site from which it was collected, Abdurant Nuru, and the Latinized ancient Greek root Eurus for tail. The species name honors paleontologist Rinkin Barsbold, who has had one of the most prolific careers most Americans may never fully grasp. Well, what can you say about almost two handfuls of tail bones? Not much, of course, but the authors still tried. They converted the bones' anatomical traits that they observed and described into data and placed that data into phylogenetic software. Then, they compared that data with the data of other sauropod dinosaurs to see where it placed in the sauropod family tree, depending on a series of tests and criteria. 
One of the tests found Abderanurus to belong to the group Somphospondyli, but technically outside of the titanosaur group. Another test found the bones to most likely be a titanosaurian sauropod, most closely related to Andesaurus of Argentina and Huabesaurus of North China, with Abderanurus as an offshoot before a grouping of the other two longnecks. A paper in 2023 describing the remains of the Chinese Gandhi Titan found Abderanurus to be Gandhi Titan's closest relative. With all that scientific mumbo jumbo out of the way, what does it all mean for the animal that was Abderanurus? Again, not much. Since it's just a chunk of tail, the exact look of the critter understandably has to be entirely hypothetical. According to the original analysis, one may have to fill in most of the missing elements from Andesaurus and Huabesaurus. Thankfully, enough of both of them are known to outline a generalized titanosaurian sauropod with a disproportionately long neck and short to medium height legs, well, at least for a sauropod. Both Andesaurus and Huabesaurus were these slightly slanted upwards or sloped sauropods, so perhaps Abderanurus was organized in a similar way. The additional description of Gandhi Titan doesn't change this much since it's known mostly from vertebrae plus some minor parts of the pelvis and ribs. Oh well, at least Andre Atichin did some killer art for the publication. Let me bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Real quick to stall for time. Based on the length, width, and depth of the tail vertebra, some math formulae, and the proportions of the same tail vertebrae and its closest relatives, some researchers and paleoartists have very roughly estimated Abderanurus to have been somewhere around 13 meters, 42 feet in length when it was alive. Whether it was truly this big, we'll have to wait until more of the body is found, so that its true proportions can be bagged and tagged. Thanks, Mr. Man. There's gotta be more known about the area in which it lived, right? Well, the area in which the bones of Abderanurus came to rest was full of red-brown sandstone, with gravelly bits thrown in for fun, plus grey sandstone and siltstone just sort of meandering in with the red-brown stuff. The bones come from the bottom of the Abdunat Nuru site, and the variously sandy bits of rock I just identified all point to one thing, water. The area was a subhumid system of shallow, moderate strength rivers that braided in and around forests, deserts, and lakes. A floodplain where animals came to drink or scavenged the things brought down river by stronger currents. Among the Abderanurus carcass were soft shelled turtles, but almost definitely a bunch of fish species and amphibians. On land waddled the heavily caruncled Pinacosaurus grangeri with its formidable tail hammer. Hooting in the background and sticking to groups for safety were the Hadrosauroids Plesiohadros. Perhaps snipping at these herbivores if they got too close were the lithe Protoceratops and Drusai. Obviously much more waits to be found or described from this unique unit of time, space, and rock. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.